So we've written a lot of code since the last time that we actually executed anything, and I am willing to bet there are errors in this code. Um, in fact, I know there are errors because I f found them. <laughs> and, uh, but <clears throat> I kind of debated, well, should I just go back in my repo, go back and record new videos? Should I pretend I'm a perfect programmer? No, you know, I've been doing this programming for several years now, and I think it's worthwhile to admit that, hey, I make a lot of mistakes. And <clears throat> let me prove to you with the unit tests that uh, it's a useful backup tool for myself. And I also want you to see my process in discovering the issues, debugging the issues, that sort of thing. So I think in this case, no, I'm not going to go record those videos again. Let's just bear with this. So one error I've noticed just by when I was uh, reviewing one of the videos um, that this frame index, it actually, we need to check if it's greater than uh, zero. Okay, so remember this new frame, um, this assertion, all this assertion is doing is checking that the number of categories we got on the zeroth frame is equal to the number of categories, uh, or the number of categories we've got in the zeroth frame is equal to the number of categories we got this current frame. So that's what this whole check is, and for some reason I was checking for not the zeroth frame, but the prior to zero, which was negative one. Anyway, so let's let's take this down to a zero. Um, <clears throat> and then there's some other bugs. I actually don't know uh, how I'm going to fix them. I haven't really gone through fixing them. But let me just show you what I found. I'm going to build this, run this. And it's kind of not depressing, but the fact that, hey, I know the tests fail, and now I've written code that they should succeed, and it'll turn out that the tests actually do not succeed. We get a lot of errors here, you know, the red, ah! And so part of me was like, oh no, I did all that work and I recorded it. But then another part of me was like, you know, but I got the unit test to kind of tell me what's going on. So let's look at this. Um, obviously sample profiles is the test that failed because that's the test we're currently trying to implement. And it looks like uh, we call get next token and get next token returns pretty much the entire file. And uh, remember, we're expecting something like this. Uh, and so we get category one, category two, category three, and then new lines at the end, and then we should have some commas in the middle. <clears throat> but it looks like get next token didn't. Uh, well, first of all, I don't even see commas in the output file. And then notice here I got category one, one, category two, one, then category three with zeros, which doesn't actually make sense. So. Uh, one other note what I want to talk about is, I'm sorry if you watched me make my errors and you were just like, oh, Jamie, what are you doing? And you just want to scream at me through the video. Eh, learn from my debugging techniques. Okay, sorry for the tangent. Anyway, um, where's the commas? Okay, and then what are these, uh, one ones and two ones and three zeros? So I should expect some commas here, right here. And then I'm not sure where these ones are coming from, so... Let's uh, let's go back to our profiler here, and this is the code right here where we write the header information. Sorry for the smaller font. Um, I hope you turned YouTube up to 1080p HD. Uh, right here is where we write the commas. Oh, it doesn't look like that's really working. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here, hit a five, and see what we find out. And sure enough, it hit this line, and I plus one. Uh, num use categories is three, so I can't really tell. So here's here's one thing about debugging is I have an expression here that returns a value, but I can't see the value. I want to be able to debug and see the value. So uh, one trick I'll use Shift F5 to stop the debugger. I need to store the value returned from this expression into a temporary variable. So let's do that char, and I'll call it debug because then I know I can just search for debug and delete this uh, temporary code. But let's go, char debug gets uh, all this stuff. And then I'm going to write debug out to the stream. So control shift B, build started, build succeeded. All right, let's uh, F5 this. And the first uh, debug character should be a comma because we're writing out category one. So let's see here. The debug is a comma. Okay, we got the four four because that's the ASCII value, the underlying uh, integral value, but uh, 
Character wise, the ASCII value is a comma, so that is correct, which doesn't make sense. F10. Uh, all right, let's run this again, and we should get another comma. Yeah, that's true. Another comma. Nope, that's the new line. 10 is the new line, so yeah, that worked out right. Let me um, control F5 of this. Let's just see here. What do we got? Uh, get next token. Category. Oh, that's even getting worse. That's. You know, I actually want to see the file. This isn't really helping me. Let's let's look at this file that we wrote. Let me um go to my operating system and open this file. I have it right here, and we can. Well, that looks a little better. Why did we get commas this time? Ah, uh, you know what? I should have looked at this file before we did this temporary. Let me um. I'm going to control Z everything I did. And let me just control F5 this to be sure we get the same thing. Build started. And build succeeded. Run. The tests fail. And then, oh look, Visual Studio detected. Hey, you just wrote to the profile CSV. You want me to reload that? Yes. Let's look at it. And oh, now the commas are gone. Oh. <laughs> Do you see <laughs> Do you see the problem? <laughs> Let me give you a clue if you don't. Uh, let me uh, control Y, all that code back in. Just by adding a temporary value, or a temporary variable, and storing the result of this expression in that variable, just to do my debugging, I actually changed the result. Let me show you. So we have, everything's on one line, and we're getting the ones out here, and we're getting a zero here. Yeah, this is actually kind of funny. Let me control F5 this again. And you see, reload, and look at that. <laughs> we get the, yeah, okay. Can you tell what's going on? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, we're having a precedence issue. So I remember when I was trying to be fancy, I was like, oh, let's use this turner. It's so much more readable than that if else. Well, if you notice, I got a lot of parentheses here. And then what's funny is the stream insertion operator has higher precedence than the ternary. Let me, um, Control Z this back, but uh, basically this operator happened before this operator. So the out stream said, "Okay, I'll output a boolean, All right?" Which makes sense. This i plus one less than num use categories. Well, yes, uh, we had a one here indicating that was true, and then we had another one here indicating it was true, but then we had a zero here indicating it was false. Anyway, and then what's even worse is. Uh, the stream insertion operator returns the stream, which then goes to its uh, uh, boolean. Uh, I think it has a conversion operator for boolean or integer. I can't remember, but it was converted like so, and then it was used in the ternary. Uh, the ternary then returned a result which was not consumed by anything because we're not assigning it to anything. Maybe that's a little more info than you needed, but that's kind of funny. So I got to fix that. Well. I need to put a parenthesis here. I need to put a parenthesis here. But then here's the worst pay part about copy and paste. Fortunately, this is on the screen at the same time. So then I can say, oh, well, I need a parenthesis there. And I need a parenthesis there. But if I didn't replace, if I didn't remember to do that, well, now it's the maintainability of this is becoming hideous. So instead of being a loser like I was and doing this less than with a ternary and copy and paste it, and now I have all these parentheses, it's starting to look a little bit like Lisp, I believe. Um, Lisp is a programming language. Let's uh, let's factor this out a little bit. So let's make a helper uh, char get delimiter. Is that how you spell delimiter? Let me go look it up. I can't remember. Yes, except obviously I forgot the e. I, I couldn't remember if there's e's in here or not. There's delimiter. Okay, char get delimiter int. Uh, Let's just do index. This will be a const function. Very good. This is going to be a little private helper function that we'll put at the bottom of our compilation unit. I like to put the, well, if I remember, I like to put my uh, private helper functions at the bottom of the compilation unit. But sometimes I don't remember that. Okay. Get delimiter. And then all get delimiter is going to do 
is return the result of this ternary, which maybe I should translate or convert back to an if else, who knows. Uh, I'll say return here. Now that it's in its own function, I don't need parentheses. Eh, maybe I'll keep it with the uh, ternary. <clears throat> okay, uh, up here, outstream, get delimiter, I, and then outstream, instead of using I here, we're using category, so get delimiter, cat, control shift B, let's see if that builds, uh, wait for it, looks good, I think, oh, I, of course, copy index, paste index, that's the one thing in the expression that changes. Let's build and run that again. Warning treat is there. Signed, unsigned, mismatch. Of course, because I said int here instead of unsigned int. Remember in a future video I'm going to show you how to make it so we don't have to type unsigned all over the place. But yet we'll still get unsigned ints. Build this. Run it. I bet the pat the test still won't pass. But hopefully we'll be past the point of uh, this get delimiter issue. And, yep, did you see that? The test failed. Uh, reload the profile CSV. Yes. Look here. Oh, this is looking better. Look at that. Nice and formatted. That's cool. Um, with commas in the proper places and the new lines at the end. So, very nice. But uh, if you notice, what we were going for and what we have are two different things. I believe what we were going for was something like this. And obviously the logic I wrote uh, does zeros and then ones and then twos. And, and now I'm feeling like a horrible instructor because obviously I... Uh, yeah. Hopefully you bear with me after this video. Okay, well, we fixed the ternary issue, um, the delimiter issue. So in the next video, let's address... Uh, why are we getting this instead of this? That's not cool.